All right, Coach, some, some really great marks at the Chico Wildcat invite. Um, not only did uh, Braley uh, Vandenboom earn the CC2A Field Athlete of the Week honor, but several other marks that were really outstanding uh, in putting your student athletes into the record books. Can you talk about the meet overall? Yeah, um, I thought it was a, overall a, a very big improvement from the previous week down in Turlock. Um, I feel like the athletes had a, a different approach mentally going into the meet. Um, I think being their second meet, there was a lot more confidence um, in their preparation and, and just knowing what to expect, you know, at a college meet. Um, so I, I think the mental approaches were better. I still think there's some that, you know, have some areas to keep improving on, um, obviously. Uh, we've had a long season ahead, but overall there are, there are a lot of big marks. Um, we had the throwers that almost, I think almost every single thrower had a PR in at least one event at Chico. Um, so it's really nice to just be hitting some, some good um, early season marks, knowing that these marks, they're just gonna keep building off of each other week by week. Um, you know, and just to start off the team with that really high energy level when people are getting PRs and, and feeling good about themselves and knowing that they're doing well, um, it really spreads to the rest of the team. Everybody picks up on that energy and you know, it's kind of a snowball effect. It just kind of keeps getting better and better. So it was an exciting week. It's easy to look at the success you guys had last week, but what are some areas your, your team and, and maybe even specifically in some events you can see some improvement on? Um, oh, that's always a tough question. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing that I see that our team could use improvement on is something that I think will just happen in time. And a lot of that really is just the mental aspect of you know, knowing, knowing how to set a, a competition routine and you know, make it the same every single time you go into competition, regardless of what's going on with the weather, regardless of who is there or what your facility is like. Um, but being confident in that preparation and doing the same thing every time so that you really feel like you're in that competition mindset and you can actually bring that same level of performance every week, you know, less sporadic but, but more consistent. So I think that's something that will just come with more meat experience um, and, you know, we'll, we'll keep addressing it with our team and, you know, talking to them about that mental approach. But I think um, physically they're prepared and, you know, each week their times are, are going to keep dropping um, as long as they can kind of keep their head on and, and um, you know, be confident in their preparation. You guys are on the road this weekend at, uh, at Sac State and then two weeks from now you're, you're back at home. Uh, now leading up to that home meet, this is a pretty big meet for you guys. Can you talk about the type of competition you'll be facing at the Hornet Invite? Um, yeah, the Hornet Invite, um, it's a really big meet. Um, it's at a Division I school, obviously. Um, so there's gonna be Division I competition there. There'll be lots of Division IIs. Um, there'll be Division Threes and NAIAs as well. Um, it's, it's a pretty broad spectrum in terms of um, you know, who's gonna be there. Um, but the highlights of, of the weekend are that we will have that really good competition. And, um, wherever our athletes are seated in terms of their, um, their, their marks at this point in the season, there's so much depth at this meet that they're going to be placed in um, appropriate heats or flights so that they're competing with everybody that's at the same level as themselves. And everybody, regardless of whether they're you know, vying for nationals this year or if they're you know, kind of on the bottom of the squad just trying to get better, everybody's going to be pushed. Um, at their at exactly where they're at this weekend. So that's something that I'm always looking forward to at this kind of a meet. Weather's been kind of an adventure this season. Uh, can you talk about what the weather outlook is like for this weekend? Um, you know, it, it changes day to day. I try not to look at it too far in advance because I know it's going to change. Um, yesterday when I looked, it said showers and possible thunderstorms. This morning when I looked, it said sunny skies on, on Saturday with potential showers on Friday. Um, so it's, it's really, we never know. Um, you know, we're always hoping for good weather, for warmer temperatures, um, but things can change, you know, right up until the day of. So we try to not let it play too much into our plan in terms of how we prepare um, and, you know, just try to be prepared for anything and hope for the best. Is this a meet where the hammer will be on Friday and then the rest of the field, or the rest of the tracking and field events will be on Saturday? Exactly. Hammer uh, is Friday morning. Perfect. Um, Talk about certain events that fans should watch out for this weekend. Do you feel like there's any specific athletes or events that should be on people's radar? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, this last weekend, our whole distance squad took the weekend off at Chico. 
Um, so they're all going to be back in full force this weekend. We're traveling a full team, so we've got um, close to 60 athletes and coaches that are traveling um, in total. So we finally have our full squad out there. Um, I think the distance runners are pretty hungry because they had an off week uh, to get back on the track and to start racing. Um, so I definitely say you expect some big things from them. I know um, we have a handful of people running the 8, the 15, um, the 5K, and we have a few that are opening up in the steeple. Um, so they're, they're really just, they're kind of kicking off their season, you know, in, in a big way this weekend at Sac State. So I think that's one group to look out for. Um, the throwers have, have just had a really good energy, you know, so far, especially the women in terms of um, kind of building off of each other's PRs and, and you know, lifting each other up to, to all do really well. So I'm expecting to see that continue. Um, I don't want to forget anybody. I'm sure I already have, but, um, but our sprinters are coming along nicely too and our hurdlers. Um, this is a fast track surface. So, you know, again, we're going to have good competition. And I'm expecting, again, that, that people's um, sprint and hurdle times are going to keep dropping this weekend. Um, any update on any of the injuries that have kind of lingered, these early season injuries, maybe Ellie Earl Rouse or your, um, uh, Yeah, else? El Ellie at this point, she's looking at potentially uh, doing a medical red shirt. Um, so it's something that, you know, we're still kind of deciphering, um, you know, in the next few weeks of her rehab to see if that's going to be the right decision for her. Um, again, it's something that I don't want to make a decision on prematurely. Um, it's ultimately it's going to be up to her and the trainers and you know and the whole coaching staff in terms of what's going to be best for her. Um, but as of right now, you know she's still continuing to take off these next few meets and just trying to get herself healthy and, and get her her knee back to um, you know feeling the way it needs to feel for her to perform. Uh, last week you had the humble relays, which is a high school meet that you hold here in Redwood Bowl. Can you talk about that meet, the turnout for that meet, and, um, and what the Humboldt State uh, Track and Field Program does to support that meet? Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's just a, a local high school meet that we put on for the high school teams. Um, it's kind of an early season kickoff for them, so it's a relay format. Um, it's kind of a, a fun meet. There's less individual performances, more, more of a team feel for them. Um, but we had some kind of different uh, non-traditional events, like we had a couple co-ed relays. Um, which were always fun, kind of interesting, kind of goofy. Um, but it, it, overall, it was a fun meet. Um, we had about eight high school teams here, um, which is a big um, increase from the last couple years where there had only been a handful. Um, but our, our athletes host the meet. Um, they you know, do all of the events in terms of um, you know, running the field events, um, helping with the timing, helping with the results. Um, they actually were the announcers. They did the awards. Um, you know, they kind of really took that on and, and ran the whole meet pretty much on their own. Um, I thought they did a wonderful job. Um, they had really good attitudes. They were very supportive of the, the local athletes. Um, and, you know, they just got a chance to kind of interface with the local youth athletes. And I think the youth athletes really, really enjoy that because it gives them exposure to our team and, you know, to our campus, just being on campus at a college um, and getting exposure to, you know, what it's like being in our facility. Um, but overall, it, it was a big success. You know, I thought it was a lot of fun, and um, it's something that we enjoy doing every year. So. And lastly, you have another high school meet coming up. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, we actually have two meets coming up in April, but they're youth meets. Um, one of them is a K through, K through fourth, and then the other one is a fifth through eighth grade meet. So, um, you know, they're, they're a little a little more goofy, I would say, even so than the high school meet, um, just in terms of, you know, a bunch of little kids running around and trying to learn, you know, what the sport of track and field even is. Um, so it's, again, they're going to be really fun meets. Um, they're not as stressful to put on as a collegiate meet at all. Um, but I think our athletes are going to have a lot of fun with that too, because they get to kind of step in and, and coach the, the kids as well. Um, they'll have their coaches there and their parents, but um, again, the, the kids really look up to the college kids in terms of their experience in the sport, um, and they really value that feedback and that support they get from the college kids. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for your time, Coach. Well.